John here, and uh, I want to talk to you this time about my 642 Smith & Wesson. Give you a little, uh, maybe a little review, but mostly just talk about it. It is a uh, 38 Special. That's what the 38 Special looks like. And, um, it has uh, five shot capacity. And uh, when you shoot all five rounds, you have to, of course, eject the rounds and then put new rounds in. Most people, of course, would realize that after you shoot it, you have to reload it. So, but um, it's a design that's been around for a while. I don't really know for sure how long it's been around. I think the granddaddy of it is the Model 40. But uh, don't quote me on that. I can't really remember for sure. Uh, but I know the 642 has been around for a while. It's aluminum framed. Has a stainless steel cylinder. Stainless barrel. Has an internal hammer. So that way there's nothing to snag. You can stick it down in your pocket. You can uh, carry it concealed. And uh, when you go to draw it, you don't have anything to snag. It's kind of got all blended edges. And... Uh, the one I have has Uncle Mike's boot grips on it, and they come standard on the gun for a little while, and I think now they have a different uh, different manufacturer grips. And I like the design of the boot grip, but I don't so much like the rubber material, because if you stick it in your pocket, the rubber tends to cling to your pocket, and when you try to draw it, it kind of interferes, but uh, I don't pocket carry much. And now uh, I'll show you the holster I use. This is a Phobos paddle holster. And uh, I bought this gun off a friend of mine. And he included the holster. And that's one reason why I use a Phobos paddle holster. I've never used one before other than this one. And uh, I like it okay. My line of work, you know, I'm a carpenter. Uh, Phobos paddle holster fits my lifestyle pretty good. I can put it on my belt, you know, and go downstairs, work a little bit, you know, if it gets in the way, I can reposition it. Don't have to undo my belt or nothing like that. can take it off when it's, you know, convenient. And because it's plastic, we don't have to worry about maintenance of it. Sawdust would dry out a leather, you know, a good leather holster. Then I have this cheap leather holster. Got this off of eBay. Didn't give, you know, five or six dollars for it. And uh, I've modified it to fit my needs. It, uh, you know, obviously, honestly, it's crap. You know, it's not the best holster. It's by far not the best holster. You know, the leather is real soft and it's just. Now when I got it, the clip, you can see how the clip's kind of at an angle compared to the gun. When I got it, the clip was straight up and down. I took the holster apart and repositioned the clip. And I did all this stitching to sew it back together. Mostly because I'm too daggone cheap to buy a good holster. Uh, the one I want is... I'm really not sure who makes the one I want. The features I would look for would be a belt holster that's convertible to cross draw, but uh, you know a good holster is going to be at least fifty dollars, maybe more. So for now, I make do with what I have, and uh, right now I am carrying this gun every day, and uh, so far it's fit the bill. In a previous video, I've done uh, shooting with it. And at 25 yards, I've been able to hit a 6 inch steel plate. And uh, I actually have a steel plate set out at 50 yards. And I'm not sure of the diameter. I think it's a 15 inch. But I can hit that with this pretty consistently. And uh, I really enjoy shooting it, especially at some distance. It's, it's mighty fun to take a little. You know, a gun you wouldn't figure you'd be able to hit anything with. You know, and sit out there, shoot with it, and, uh, you know, hear that steel ring. 
that's pretty nice and uh, with the double action trigger you have to have a lot of practice in order to be able to do that you know and um, I'll verify that it is unloaded and then I'll get a good video here you can see watch my trigger control that's not you know not the best I'm not Jerry Mikulik or you know one of the famous shooters but uh, I dry fire the gun a lot I practice with it a lot and uh, you know it's nice to know you can pull off a headshot at 25 yards you know and most people couldn't do that with one of these little rascals but um, it is a uh, a newer model with a lock and uh, I've done some work to it I've, of course I've detail stripped it a time or two and uh, mainly uh, there's an action bar that's right behind the trigger and then I took that and polished that and uh, took sharp edges off here and there and uh, put a 12 inch or not a 12 inch a 12 uh, pound uh, trigger return spring and uh, sweeten the action up so it's it's pretty light it's not real light but it's, uh, it's light enough I can shoot with it decent. And if you look at them sights, you look right down them rascals, you can see you don't have much to work with. You got just a teensy notch in the back and pretty fat little blade in the front. The wider the sight is, the harder it is to hit at longer distances. So, you know, when you're, you're young like me, you got good eyes, you, you can see them little sights. And they're, you know, the more precise sights are better but this is a belly gun it's not really made for shooting long distance Smith and Wesson says 10 yards that's what they you know maximum distance for it but uh, ideally you want to be close enough to shove it into somebody's gut if you need to in a self defense situation of course but uh, you know in a capable hands you can do it reach out there a little ways. Of course I got a speed loader for it. That's always handy to have. Carry that in your pocket. And then uh, it's plus P rated. These are some plus P rounds that I have. But I, I don't carry plus P. There's no reason to, you know. Nobody wants to get shot with a 38 special. So they ain't gonna know the difference. If I have to shoot somebody they're not gonna say, you know, you should hit me with a plus P. I'm not going down. So, generally, I just load it with regulars. I've carried these. These are Winchesters. I'm not really sure uh, which model they are. Because when I, I think I got them from the gunsmith, they were in a bag. But uh, right now I'm carrying these Aguilas, which are these. They're 158 grain bullets. And 158 kicks a little bit in a lightweight gun. Really? For practice, I got these. These are uh, 130 grains, Remington brand and Winchester brand. It's about the same thing. But uh, with the 130 grain bullets, the gun does not kick nearly as bad as it does with 150 grain bullets. However, the gun seems to shoot both of them pretty good. So can't really think of anything else to say about it other than uh, you know a Smith & Wesson revolver pretty much been the same all the way back I guess until about 1898-1899 when they come out with the uh, military and police and this is just basically a modified design of that it's you know, all the Smith & Wesson revolvers have been modified designs of that and uh, you know it's been an excellent design it's very rugged most people know how to work on one if you're a gunsmith and uh, they're pretty simple to clean and I uh, just figured I'd show y'all my carry piece and uh, you know if you're thinking about getting this model I would recommend it and this is John signing off